Matt with Marine Tech, and today we're going to be working on a 2003 Yamaha F225. We had it out on the water yesterday, and water wasn't coming out of the telltale. Also, wasn't charging the battery, so our guess is uh, there's a blockage behind the voltage rectifier, and we're going to tear it apart and see what it looks like. All right, to get to the rectifier regulator, we just have to pull off this air box. We've got two M10 screws back here, one up top, one down below. Uh, disconnect your sensor and you can just pop off this hose. And I'll get those screws out. All right, with all four screws out, our sensor unhooked and airline unhooked, should just pop right off. So the regulator rectifier is back here and to get to it, we're going to have to pull off this other air box, get all the screws out for this plastic mounting bracket, get that out of the way, and then we should be able to get to it and pull it off and make sure there's no buildup of uh, corrosion behind it. All right, so we got our four M10 screws out. We disconnected the positive and negative battery cables and this air box should just pop off maybe with a little persuasion like the other side. There we have it. Now we can finally remove this plate or at least get it out of the way and get to our rectifier. There's one last screw hidden behind the fuel filter you have to remove. Good luck finding them all. And now we can just kind of unhook a few wires and fold this out of the way and get to our bolts holding on the rectifier. And that'll give us the clearance we need. Get these last two M10 screws out. So there's four screws on the back side holding this together. Uh, we'll probably get those out with the shallow M10 socket and uh, break it apart and really find out what's, what it looks like. It looks pretty clean. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, we're gonna find our problem in here. Don't see a bunch of salt build up around the gasket. Screws out of the back. We're gonna try to pry this open, uh, see what's inside. No good way to get to it. Um, might have to pull it off the motor. A couple hose clamps holding the cooling lines on, and then some battery cables. All right, so I got one of the coolant lines off and uh, there's quite a bit of corrosion in there and you can see the other one so a lot of corrosion right there the connection so I'm gonna end up pulling this whole um, rectifier regulator out that way I don't cut my hand wide open and we can do a more thorough job cleaning it and here where my finger is again pulling this coolant line off lots and lots of build up Find the electrical connections. We've got two of them right here. All right, almost there. Got two more connections. These blue connectors way down here. We do have one more ground screw. And it's off. Give the old check. Well, that's not our problem. It flows through it with ease. We'll go on down the line and see what uh, what else we can find with the clog in it. Um, the fuel cooler, and it looks like the flow goes through the fuel cooler and then out the telltale. So we'll go ahead and pull this bottom off, see if we can pull the fuel cooler off, get a better look at it. Okay, so just blowing on this tube uh, when it goes through the fuel cooler, uh, it is totally blocked. We'll, again, we'll pull it off and we'll take the bottom side off the outlet, which goes to the telltale, and we'll just jam some some fishing line or uh, weed eater line or welding wire, any coat hanger, anything that'll fit through. All right, we got the hose clamp off and the hose is off. Perfect. Now. Time to go find a wire or coat hanger. So you need three hands for that job. 
<laughs> so we ended up using a, uh, a batten from a kite. It didn't have any wire, didn't have a coat hanger. We're almost through here. Feels a lot of resistance, but I think we're getting it. All right, I'm confident that was our plug. I don't know um, if you can see all this sand gritty stuff that was in our fuel cooler. Okay, so yesterday in all of my excitement, I did not do a very good job of labeling hardware or putting screws in a cup for where they went. Um, so I put everything back together and had to take it apart again because I had an extra screw that was too long. So you have six screws that hold on this plastic cover. One, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth is back behind this electrical connector. So six screws, all the same length, hold on your big plastic cover. These four shorter ones hold on your controller. Um, this bracket for your connectors has one screw. That is the shortest screw uh, of all that, other than these four. So you've got one short screw, and then the three screws, one, two, back behind this electrical connector is the third one. Those three screws are all the same length holding on your wiring connectors. So again, six long screws for the black plastic, four equal length for your ECU, uh, one really short one for this bracket, and then three equal length screws that kind of there's uh, for the wiring connectors and they're shorter than the ones for the black plastic. Very helpful hint. Just going to put the air box back on. It was kind of a pain to yank off. So we'll see how difficult it is to push back into place. Uh, it's got two little metal standoffs. Just make sure you don't lose those. Uh, they tried to get lost when I installed this or when I removed it. make that easy. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pull these back off and make sure they're, um, the boots are lined and connected and then we'll put it back on as one unit. So this is what I was talking about, trying to get this to uh, made up while already installed on the boat. It's probably impossible. Uh, I think we're going to need to get some new zip ties and make this work. So two zip ties works. It's not easy, but I made it happen. Just clip off the excess and hopefully this thing will stay together as we put it back on. Got our spacers. I think that's the map sensor goes on starboard, I mean port. I think the air box has stayed connected. So victory for us. Yeah, and don't forget this, uh, I think, crankcase ventilation line up here. All right. Sensor. Then have some more tubing up here to connect. Well, that's in. So now we're going to put our screws on. I'm going to put all of them on just finger tight and then we'll snug it up after that's done. So I just was thinking uh, once we put these battery cables on, we're done. Totally forgot I've got a leaky C-Star steering cylinder and I can't get the drain plug out of the gear case and I need to check the water pumps and look for um, exhaust corrosion. So we're just getting started. I like what Yamaha did here. Uh, 
positive cable is one size and the negative cable is another, so you can't mix them up. And one's a 10 millimeter and one is 12 millimeter. Yeah, there's boots under. Don't want those to be exposed. It's just held in place by three screws. Hopefully they don't pop out as we put this on. All right, so we got the boat back together and we're gonna head down to the uh, boat ramp and drop it in the water and see if we did indeed fix the problem. Uh, that fuel cooler was really jammed up. That probably explains why we had the rough idle once the engine got warm. all the reasons why that starboard motor still isn't being cleaned out a bunch of junk. Deja vu. It's like the first day we picked up the boat. There is no hose on the bottom of the fuel cooler. So that is it. I think I can reach it. Spring clip is back up, hose is on. Again, I don't know if you can see down here. In all of our excitement, I forgot to put the bottom of the fuel cooler back on. Let's fire it up and see if the uh, motor fills up with water. Like a little squirt oh, yeah. Did you Victory! Not, did you not have it plugged in? Didn't have the bottom of the outlet of the fuel cooler. It wasn't plugged in. So it was just dumping. That's not water running. 